So here it goes, the man with the force is back with episode six. Could be a uh, film trailer in there somehow, I might, I might copyright that one. Anyway, um, this is a really important one, really important one, because it contains everything. Um, I'm going to show you what I do, and so you can do this for yourself. Um, I subscribe to F1 TV, I'm even doing their advertising for them. It costs me in the UK approximately 20 quid for a year subscription and it enables you to view many, many historic Formula One races. So it'll have the present season races, you can replay them and it's got the archive so you can delve into all the past seasons and replay races and other footage from loads and loads of seasons back in the history of the sport. Um, so... 2013 German Grand Prix. There's a safety car incident and I need to show you what goes on. Now, a website that I use, if it's going to load up now, is this one called um, f1fandom.com uh, slash wiki slash safety car. And what it lists is uh, all of the details of safety car deployments, usages, uh, what the safety car was, years and everything like that, uh, um, safety car finishes and so on and so forth. So um, what I've done, I go through the years, I look at the situation and take an educated guess from there where there's likely to have been a safety car deployed and it's possible that lap cars uh, were in situ. Go and look at the race on F1 TV. And uh, what you can do is then see what happens. So um, looking at 2012 on here, this is the list of safety car deployments in 2012. Australia, Malaysia, Monaco, European, Belgium, Singapore, Japanese, uh, Abu Dhabi and Brazil. So the four that I did, uh, the four videos I did for 2012, I looked at the data and We've got a safety car deployment on lap 37. It's far enough into the race where you think there's a good chance that the leaders may have lapped the lapped, may have lapped, may have lapped the back markers. You know, if the safety car is deployed within the first lap or two, you're not likely to get lapped cars at that stage. So I don't look at them events. All right. So I'm looking at lap 37 and then it says racing resume on lap 42. Now, the accuracy of these figures isn't always um, exact uh, and you'll, you'll see that when you go through it. But there's about five laps there. If 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. Well, potentially six. We'll have to wait and see. But when you look at that kind of that far into the race, that many, many laps used up for that period, there's a good chance that you've, uh, you, you're looking at an unlapping process for the safety car to have taken that amount of time. So I went and looked at that event, you know, fast forwarded the race till about that point in time and watched it. And then you see what you see. So you can do the same. OK, you can all do the same as what I did. So that was Australia. Uh, I also did the European Grand Prix. So that's 28 to lap 33. OK, I then did the Sing Singapore Grand Prix. The first one, which was lap 33 to 38, because then a couple of laps after resumption, it's laps 40 to 42. Well, in them two laps res resumed, you're not going to get lapped cars, so I didn't even bother looking at that. And then Brazil, uh, we've got lap 23 to 29, with Brazil being a short lap. Um, it can be that you get lapped cars quite quickly in Brazil. Um, and that race ended up finishing behind the safety car anyway. So then we go to 2013, all right, and we've done Monaco, all right, where it's laps 31 to 38. Now we know that uh, from the video I've just done, if you watch that, we know that uh, Massa had a crash on what was his lap 29. The st uh, Rosberg, the leader, was starting lap 30. The safety car was deployed on 31. And racing resumed on 39, so the um, safety car was called in at the end of 38, okay? And it says six laps uh, lost. Well, the reality was um, lap 30, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight were all behind the safety car. So that's seven laps all behind the safety car. And lap 31, the safety car went out. So you could, could argue that's actually eight laps. The first lap was actually um, double wave yellows. So it, these the numbers aren't perfect, but it gives you a good idea. Anyway, we come down. I looked at the British Grand Prix. Um, that was a possibility. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, but I don't think there were lapped cars in that one. Uh, Vettel had lapped somebody, but then pitted just before this incident, um, unlapping the lapped car at, during that time, and then an incident happened and the safety car was deployed from there on. 2013 German Grand Prix, so stranded car, lap 24 to 29. Now, I was thinking, well, that could be quite earlier in the race, early in the race for cars to be lapped in Germany, um, but we'll have a look. So this is what I do. We'll go to F1 TV and look at the German Grand Prix. Now, before I get into this one, in my previous video, I um, advised the, the the trolls and the haters that are making the comments in the comment section, the uneducated comments, um, making claims that it is it is possible to release the lapped cars while there are marshals on the track. I told them to go and look at the 2015 Japan Grand Prix and learn from what took place there. I got that wrong. It's the 2014 Japanese Grand Prix that they need to look at. Um, and I'll tell you what it is. It's the Jules Bianchi incident. Where sadly, Jules Bianchi ended up losing his life as a result of what took place. Now, um, as a result of things that take place in Formula One, the procedures are reviewed. The safety procedures are under constant review as the rules of the sport and the procedures which are, they are carried out uh, are continually assessed and if they can make improvements for, for safety, that's what they do. That incident resulted in massive changes as to what they do and how they go about dealing with um, safety incidents. Because if you go back into the history of the sport, you will see cars on the side of the track and marshals just um, wheeling them cars away with cars still racing by. You know, sometimes it's under double wave yellows, but sometimes the cars are barely slowing at all. You'll see that then, but you won't see that these days because they realise that it's so dangerous, they've got to do something different. They've got to slow the cars right down and they've got to ensure that, it, that, that there's no chance of them cars that are on the track losing control and going into those marshals that are dealing with the incident and causing a, a situation which causes a loss of life. Okay, But these procedures have evolved over time. And by the time we have got to the 2021 season, in fact, it's happened several seasons before that, we know that when you clear up a safety incident by deploying the safety car, you go through the procedure where you gather the cars together so that you've got the cars under controlled speed. And then you can say, right, the track is, we, we've controlled the situation. Now you can get on track, deal with what needs to be dealt with. Okay. Get it dealt with, get the track clear, get the barrier, make sure it's okay. Are we all good? Yes, we're good. Now we can restart by resuming the procedures. Okay, get the lapped cars released, do the mandatory safety car lap, and then we can go racing again. That's the order that they do things. And as I say, you can look back in history and say, well, they didn't do it then. No, they didn't. It's not always been the same. But there's an evolution of the process. And tragically, uh, it took Jules Bianchi losing his life for the sport to actually change some of its processes. Um, anyway, and, and, and actually they still get things wrong. They still get things wrong. They got it wrong at the Japanese Grand Prix in 2022 when... 
they had a crane on track and they released the, um, Pierre Gasly. Well, Pierre Gasly was making his way around the track faster than um, probably, whether it's Delta was, I don't know, but it's typical of what racing drivers do. They will try and push to regain the ground, any ground lost. I think Gasly, didn't Gasly um, get some sort of damage to his nose cone, I believe, in that incident where Sainz crashed out? Whatever it was, um, he was behind the field. They were dealing with removing Sainz's car off track. Gasly was pushing round to make the ground back but went past the incident on track in heavy rain and heavy spray where the visibility was, was really poor and literally passed this uh, crane that was on track within a few feet of it. Anna Marshall was there and it came as a massive shock and shook him up because it was so dangerous. And after the event, there was a huge review and Gasly got the, the blame for it and that's where they pointed the finger. Oh, it's your fault, Gasly because they didn't want the finger pointed at them for the fact that they're in control of that operation. They're in control of what telling the cars exactly what they can be doing, and that dangerous situation occurred. And the upshot of it was that that particular race director was removed from his position for the rest of the season. And the excuse given by the FIA was, oh, we're going to use the other one for greater consistency. But the truth is, that wasn't the reason. The truth is, that was gross negligence on his part. And had that have resulted in a loss of life or severe injury to anybody, then they would have been found negligent for not carrying out that clear up operation in a safe manner. And that is that is the health and safety aspect of Pretty much everything in life now. Somebody's responsible for that. The FIA are the people responsible. So you will see the evolution of rules and processes and procedures in relation to clear up operations. So anybody that keeps making the... Con they, they continually make the comment, oh, lapped cars could have been released earlier than when they were. Categorically, you are wrong. Now, I'm not going to get involved in arguments in the comment section with people that don't know what they're talking about. I'm telling you what it is. If you don't agree with me, I don't care. Some things are what they are. There, That is the facts of the matter. Whatever your opinion is, it's wrong. You'll see on here something that you won't see these days. And I'll show you it. So I'm going to show you. Um, here we go then. The 2013 German Grand Prix. We are on lap four, okay, very early into the race. And Felipe Massa in a Ferrari um, has span and his engine has cut out and that puts him out of the race. So I might play the odd bit, but I want to show you stills of the clear-up operation that you just will not see these days. Done, Felipe Massa. Day done at a very tricky first corner. Well, let Felipe me... Massa, the first retiree. So, um... The first corner of the race, that's where he is, right on the corner. So, at the end of a long straight. Okay, so it's a really dangerous spot. Well, they might need a safety car. They could do it. In straight away, Brundle is suggesting, will it need a safety car? You can see these straight lines here. Okay. The double waves, which means Marshall's on track, slow down, be prepared to stop. DRS disabled, of course, down the pit straight now. Well, okay. So. Um, they're going to deal with it initially with double wave yellows. I'm going to need to fast forward you to show you what they do and how dodgy it looks. Of course, down the pit straight now, well, all around the track. So in comes... Did you see that? Straight away, in comes the digger. <laughs> Pretty much straight away, in comes the digger. Um, that would not be allowed like that these days. It's the digger. He's riding on board with Fernando Alonso. Well, that was really odd. So you can see that was Massa spinning out. I'm going to, um, again, fast forward to a little bit more footage further on. So remember, Massa spun uh, lap four. He was starting his um, lap four. This is the leaders finishing lap four. So just about to cross the start-finish line to begin lap five. 
And remember, Massa's just at the end of this straight. To that in a moment, Fettel and Weber crossing the line now. Double waved yellows down into turn one, and Fettel's actually. And what can we see? We can see the crane removing the car there, and there's a marshal either side of the car just steadying the car. This is at the end of a straight where they've got the braking zone and they've turned into turn one. They would not deal with that incident in that way these days. Because if a car was to lose it here and carry on straight into that, what's going to happen? Okay, but this is 2013 and this is what they did. Now, you can, you can argue all you like, well, that's a better way of doing it in terms of it doesn't make you lose um, lots of laps out of the race. Needlessly, some, sometimes feels you, you, the safety car gets deployed and pretty much straight away you've lost two to three laps. Whereas now, within next to no time, that car is cleared out of the way. But the potential is there that a speeding car comes down this straight, having sped up to maybe 180 miles an hour, and in the same way, although they should be under double wave yellows, they should be going at a much slower speed. Okay, But if a car loses control and spins off, smashing into that, well, a Formula 1 car hitting a crane stroke digger like that, it's hitting a solid ob object that's not going to deform. And that's not going to end well for the driver. Okay, um, There's men there on either end of Massa's car steadying the car. If they get smashed into by a, a Formula One car, it's not going to end well for them. So this is the evolution of processes. They won't deal. They won't clear up things like that, like this anymore. Okay. Um, they might do virtual safety car potentially, where they slow the cars down to a much slower speed and maintain the gaps between them. Because, there's, again, there's less chance of the cars losing control at that much slower speed. Um, but, like I say, they would not deal with it in the same way that it's being dealt with at this race. Bearing in mind, this is 2013, and they learn from incidents like this. Anyway, um, whether there's any more to say, I don't know. Well, let's have a look. Even uh, without this, see the car being uh, taken away by the crane. Metal's now taken another car. Well, you can see it's there. You, you just before a cut off, because when it panned to this shot, you could see them on either side. And all it's going to do is reverse him back into this gap here, and then then it'll be back resuming racing again. So it's a good method of, of resuming racing. Don't get me wrong; it, it gets the incident dealt with quickly, but it's all about safety. Okay, it's all about safety. So that is what their priority has to be. Anyway, um, what we then see on in this race, uh, the, the, the cars are, have um, started to pit almost immediately. Lap 5, I think, we get in the first pit stops for tyre changes, which you'd think 5 laps into a 60-lap race, why are they changing tyres so early? That's the way it was back then. Um, but I'm going to fast-forward a few laps and show you that in what then happens. So we're on lap 8 of the race. Um, Hamilton and Vettel had pitted. Uh, Hamilton was on pole. Uh, the two Red Bulls of Vettel and Weber got the jump on Hamilton off the line and uh, beat him into turn one, which meant Red Bull were running one and two with uh, Vettel and Weber. Vettel had pitted in response to Hamilton pitting, so Weber was then in the lead, and he gets this message. What is interesting? Box mark, box, talk, one, and box. So Weber gets told to pit on lap eight and hopefully we're going to cut to Weber's pit stop now and I'll try and play as much of that as possible but I'm going to have to block it I'm going to have to stop it on numerous occasions because I can't play it continuously they will definitely um, block this video on copyright because of what it shows so this is Weber coming into the pits I was behind those that started on the medium compound like a aerial view Okay, so it shows you from the top, and it's fair play, it shows us quite a lot of it. Alonso, Hulkenberg, Button. So Mark Webber now... Okay, pay attention to 
the um, rear right tyre, what's going on here. Stops into the pits. You can ride on board with... See, all the other three, they've cleared it. They're all good. But the rear right... Both Mercedes or both Rebels. It oh. is a long stop. And right. And they're not happy with it. The rear right. But he's, he's uh, been released. There's a bit of wheel spin as he gets away. And, he's yeah. and that back tyre that rear right tyre wasn't attached and comes off his car now watch this tyre okay watch this tyre oh. there's a wheel gone and the wheel rolling down and he's oh. hit the okay so the cameraman here has taken out by this uh, this wheel so if i come back replay that pretty dangerous look at the way it takes the guy out so he's trying to accelerate up to what will be what 50 miles an hour for the pit lane speed limit so just by accelerating up to 50 miles an hour what a wheel does to somebody traveling at it wouldn't won't even be 50 miles an hour look at the damage it does you won't see graphically what it does but you see how easy it just knocks this guy over both long mercedes or both rebels it oh. is a long stop and there's a just having to pause it to try and not play continuous footage. But the wheel spins, he gets away and wheels on. He's been waved. There's a wheel gone and the wheel rolling down. And he's oh. hit the cap. Okay, proper takes him out. Proper takes him out. Um, I'll just play it one more time just so you, it's difficult to always pick it up. So you, at least you know what you're looking at. Now you can have a look. Both long Mercedes stop. or stop. both Rebels. It oh. is a long stop and there's a bit of wheel spin as he gets away and oh, he's is. been waved. There's a wheel gone. And the wheel rolling down, and he's oh. hit the cameraman on the back. He wasn't looking, and it's just smashed him in the back. And obviously, these guys are then running to this guy's aid. Weber's pulled over. He's only got three wheels on his car. Um, and I'm going to fast forward through to then what subsequently happens. Credit where credit is due. This is what the uh, what Crofty does say. I hope he's okay. I really do. But it sped through the Mercedes and the Mer okay um, I'll try and fast forward to show you um, uh, what then happened to Weber so very shortly after he says mark I might have missed mark where mark out on this uh, recording listen to what he says Weber's race is now over here at the Nur okay Weber ring the track that he loves so much so he's saying mark Weber's race is now over but it's not after he got hit. Okay, switch off the engine, please. Switch off the engine. Okay, so that's the team radio message to Weber. Mark Weber out of this Grand Prix. Tear down. Um, but that's still not true. Mark Weber being uh, wheeled back, but that's not the important thing. It's how this cameraman is getting some great medical help uh, from the pit lane doctors. They were straight. So that is the important thing. It's the well-being of, of human beings. That, that is the most important thing. Let's, let's always be clear about that. Um, I'm still going to fast forward to where we see something. Up, uh, he looks essentially uh, OK, but uh, I'll get an update for you uh, as soon as I can. So, so um, thankfully, and again, I don't know the end result, but the, what... Ted in the pits is reporting that he thinks that the cameraman is okay, um, but they've got the Mercedes team mechanics trying to go to his aid and the medical crews and, and the, the Formula One doctor there um, going to make sure he's okay. But the Red Bull mechanics have run down the pit lane and have wheeled Weber back. And what they do, they reattach a wheel to his car and send him back on track. Um, and we'll see where he emerges. So Weber will go back into the race, I believe, All right. when they put some tyres on. Thanks for that, Ted. Grosjean. So, eventually, this is Weber coming out of the pits. Yet, as Mark we Weber does come back out into this race, behind Max Chilton in the Marussia. So down now. Behind Max Chilton in the Marussia, but not just that. In 21st place. So, let me just... Um, try and show you he's actually um, a long afternoon for Mark Webber I'm hoping that this um, this graphic at the bottom of the screen moves along to was, uh, 
let me just see if I can fast forward it. Um, so there you go, Chilton in 20th. Um, will it give Weber? Oh, no, it's gone through there. Um, let's play forward. Well, to, to get out of the way, and there's the cameraman not having any. Okay, so there you go. He's in 21st with Massa in 22nd. Well, would have been 22nd, is out. But he's a lap down, right? Mark Webber, from being the race leader, not only dropped to the back of the pack, he lost a lap as well. So he's a lap down on the leaders, but he's also the last running competitor at the end of all of the running competitors. So an entire lap, lap down and last runner anyway. So that's that's how far, how much of the ground he has lost from that incident. So we then get a safety car incident. And if, if we go to, um, if we escape this and we go to the F1 wiki, we've got to um, look at it and it's on lap 24. So we'll go back to F1 TV and we'll look at... Uh, the 2013 and we'll I'm gonna um, go through to lap 23 24 and let's see what happens there so I'm gonna pause it for now so on lap 23 this happens and I think if I remember correctly I'm just uh, I've not watched this through this time I think some crazy shit happens here uh, let's see what happens Oh, Ted, we've got an engine blow out here it's the Marussia of Jules Bianchi and there's a Jules Bianchi. Fire as well, and Jules will need to get out of there fairly swiftly. Parks the car up. and uh, I'm going to try and just do this in a way that you get to see it without F1 TV um, taking this down for copyright. does make his exit. The fire is uh, out before the marshal can uh, get near to the Marussia. But a fairly substantial blowout on the. Uh... Okay, let me see if I can uh, just fast forward it. Um, yeah. F1 website. Is it's now that's... rolling down the track by itself. Oh no! So Jules Bianchi's car starts rolling backwards because it was on an incline. Look at this tractor by the side of the track. Okay. So this tractor had gone out there to recover it, but this car starts rolling back across the track. Now double yellows are out there and the drivers need warning as the car with nobody in it is... See the tractor? So we've got cars again coming through, although it's double wave yellow, so, so they should be slowing down. We've got this car without a driver in it, having gone back across the track, um, because it's obviously decided to reverse itself back down the hill and there's a, tri a tractor well look you can see the problems it's just freewheeling down the road there's your race leader Sebastian Vettel and a second place man Roman Grosjean I'm to just stop this uh, just for the analysis coming through and there's the marshal the safety car is now out as actually the advertising hoarding does everyone a favour and slows that Marussia down Okay, so safety car deployed on lap 24. All right, so I will take you through the safety car procedure. Now, if we look at the, um, the race situation now, Mark Webber in 19th position. Okay, there's is uh, Vern, John Eric Vern in 20th position, I'm guessing. Um, so that's the race situation, but we know that Weber is the lapped car. But look how far down the running order is. He's a lap down, but is in 19th position. Now, is he interfering with the race between the leaders? And quite simply, which is because this is the description that Crofty keeps saying. They get them out of the way so that they don't interfere with the race between the leaders. 
So is Mark Webber in 19th position in that track? Okay, because because the, 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 the field hasn't been lapped now. He's the only car that's been lapped that got put a lap down because of what happened in that, in that dodgy pit stop where they didn't attach the wheel. He's running in that field now in, in 19th position. Okay. Now, let me just um, see what's going on again with the banner. Two seconds. Yeah, the reason I said two seconds, the graphic wasn't making sense because um, I was thinking, well, if somebody's in the pits and he's, he's a lap down on them, how can he be ahead of them? And it must have been because that car was retiring, so he's out the race. So Bianchi's out. Obviously, we've just seen his car on fire. Massa was the first guy out. Then Bianchi's out. And then uh, Vern must have gone into the pits and retired his car with a problem, okay? Which is the reason why Weber is in 19th. But in those few laps, he's overtaken. He's making his way through the field, okay? So he's 46 seconds behind uh, Max Chilton, but he's in 19th position, all right? So if you're in, if you're in this position... And we'll, we'll, we'll try and see if they show where he is in the race order. But is he interfering with the race between the leaders? You'll see from how far back he comes, okay, when they release him. And you'll see that he's not interfering with the race between the leaders. And hence, that is not the reason why he is released. So I'll, again, jump to the bits that are relevant. There as that car comes careering down, that was definitely the wrong one. But so I'll just replay this bit because this is a replay of what was going on. So they've got a marshal, or is he a marshal? Well, showing the the green flag. This is this is Jules Bianchi here, having just got out of that flaming car. This is a replay of it. Be passed, not to lose the lead of the race. Oh dear. We need the, the green flag there as that car comes careering down. That was definitely the wrong one. But as you see... So, again, mistakes get made like that, all right? But this is the sort of thing where they review the procedures and they've like, we've got to sort this out. We've got to get this right. We can't be so negligent in getting things so wrong, okay? I'm not going to blame anybody for this. Sometimes, you know, it, it had... Had to be some braking system and the car and the fire of taking it out and then you, this car can, can roll. Um, I think we saw it in a Ferrari back in 2022. Was it Science's car set on fire and then started rolling? Um, and I think the marshal jammed something under it to try and wedge it to stop it rolling anywhere. These things can happen, but it's trying to come up with processes to best deal with them. Okay. Um, again, I'll try and take us through to the important parts of what takes place during this safety car period. So Mark Webber might get the service here of lap cars. He will. He should get the service of lap cars can now pass yeah. the safety car. Mark Webber might get the service of lap cars being allowed to pass the safety car. He will. He should get that. That's what Mark. Let's just replay that. Mark Webber might get the service here of lap cars. He will. He should get the service of lap. He should get the service of lap cars being the last to pass the safety car. Cars can now pass yeah. the safety car, <laughs> which would certainly help him. Okay, I will try and get to a point in the footage where it shows just how far back he was in the running order at this point, knowing that he's a lap down on everybody. Right, let's try and count these cars through, okay? And see what the running order is at this stage behind the safety car. So we're coming down the start finish straight onto lap 26. So, Started seventh out Vettel. of this race. Not so Vettel, and then we've got these two uh, of Grosjean and Raikkonen in, I think, the Lotuses. King until after the race, as his car just seems to... Vi and then Fernando Alonso in the Ferrari. And then we've got Jensen Button in the McLaren. The left going into turn one, a very strange incident that one. And then whatever car that is, followed by a Mercedes. Let's have a look on this um, banner at the bottom. Also out of this race, Jules Bianchi. 
with the... See, the next runners are quite a bit behind. Fire, oil, fire, engine... So that was Nico Hulkenberg in sixth, and then the uh, Mercedes was Hamilton. Look how far eighth is behind at the moment. So the, we're now looking for Pastor Maldonado, Sergio Perez, who is likely to be in the McLaren, and Adrian Suttil. So we know that Weber is not in the top, is not interfering with any of those top seven runners at the moment. Engine fire that has caused eventually this safety car. Mark Weber losing a wheel and a. So, um, Pastor Maldonado is now, and then Perez in the McLaren in ninth. Pit stop, and and then the Force India of Adrian Sutil in tenth. Getting back out again eventually, but right. At Again, I'm just stopping it to try and avoid copyright claims, which they'll still try and do. The back of the field, and we're all hoping that the world feed... Uh, a shame that they've cut off that angle, but let's see if we can see where he actually feeds back in. So we're looking for Daniel Ricciardo, Toro Rosso, Paul De Resta, I think he's in Fort India, Nico Rosberg in 13th in the Mercedes. I don't know what Gutierrez is, I don't know what car he's in, and I don't know what car Bottas is in. 14th and 15th. I don't know if we'll see it. Was hit by the wheel bouncing down. Okay. So I don't know if it's going to show us. I will fast forward and if it, if it shows us, I will show you. Okay. Hopefully we can determine where Weber is from this shot. Now I'm not certain because I don't know which one is the second Red Bull. This is Vettel, first car behind the safety car. So we've got can you tell the, 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 the we've got uh, Grosjean and Raikkonen. And then we've got Alonso um, had an and that would be Russell, I believe. Uh, and then it is the guy in sixth. I've forgotten who it was. Was it Hulkenberg, maybe? And then Hamilton is where I'm waving now. The... That's Hamilton. Then this is Maldonado. The race, and that's Perez in the McLaren. So... And that's Subtle. Now, is this one Weber? But is that a Toro Rosso? Because there's a, a yellow nose back here. So we know that Suttil was 10th. So is he, like, in between 10th and 11th? At what stage were you aware of Because there's De Resta. So is that Weber? I don't know. It does say Red Bull on the front with the yellow nose cone, but so does this one the on the back. So these are all the other runners. Um, What's this? Two ladders before I came in. So... Is it that one? I don't. I don't know. But he's outside the top ten. He's outside the top ten. Those of you that followed the sport avidly during that era will know the answer to that question. I detached from Formula One for a period of time. I've got other things going on in life, and to be honest with you, um, I. I was disillusioned with it anyway because I realised that a lot of the stuff was being hyped up and I realised a lot of the things that were being said weren't true so and the other thing was I didn't want to be spending that much per month on watching and having to pay for Sky Sports um, so I'd, I'd try and watch the highlights occasionally on Channel 4 here in the UK which are free but then if you found out the result before the highlights programme came on then I often didn't bother to watch so look that bit is irrelevant, but whichever, wherever he is, he's outside the top 10. And it will now say this. Uh, it's a shame, it's a second time. Lapped cars may now overtake. Car number two, Mark Webber. Okay, so now he's allowed to overtake. He's outside of them top 10 runners. Is he interfering with the race between the leaders? The answer is not. He is not in the way of any of those top 10 cars challenging each other for position. However, the race director has given the order for lapped cars may now overtake. So is the reason he's doing that to get him out of the way? Or is the reason, is the real reason something different? And I will answer that for you. The real reason is something different. The real reason is to ensure sporting fairness to every competitor in that race so that the restart order is first, 
down to the last remaining competitor and if possible all nose to tail with equivalent or almost equivalent gaps between every competitor so that that race resumes with fairness to every running competitor. That is the real reason. That is how it is. That is a fact. There will be people that jump up in the comment section and try to argue with that being a fact and claim that's not the reason. If it's not the reason, you wouldn't see it happening like this time and time and time and time again. It is the reason. Don't try and argue with it because you're wrong. Simple as that. Think I've found it. Aerial view and listen to what Brundle says. I'm surprised Mark Webber's at the back then. Look at this uh, car here that's now making a move. Okay. Uh, right at the back. Be passing the cars. It should be passing Is everybody that else. He's been released to uh, overtake the safety car and hand, there he goes, he pulls now. There he is. The news. Uh, so not only was he a lap down, he was the last remaining runner. Is he in that position interfering with the race between the, the leaders? Well, he's not interfering with anybody's race in that, posi in that position, is he? He's last in that entire field at that stage. And... Yet he's still allowed to go past all of them cars that are ahead of him, past the safety car, and then regain that lap. He wasn't interfering with anybody in that position. Categorically not interfering with a single competitor in that position. Okay? You cannot argue with that. You cannot argue with that. He wasn't interfering with anybody. This is Martin Brundle and David Croft commentating on this race back in 2013. They can see that he is not interfering with anybody in that position. They can see that it's not in the latter stages of the race. You don't want him interfering with the race between the leaders because it's not the latter stages of the race. It's none of what they've said, is it? Even earlier, Brundle has said he'll get the benefit of being released and allowed to unlap himself. That should happen. So Brundle knows the rules. They've seen that the fact that he's running at the end and now he's been released, allowed to overtake everything and get that lap back. So this is on lap 26. But uh, they should have had that half a minute ago because he could be down that pack and... Right, so he's on lap 26. He should have had it that minute ago. Ultimately, Brundle, don't tell us when it should have happened. The race director is monitoring that situation. And once he is ready to pass that order on, he will pass that order on. You clearly aren't party to the procedures that are going on. You aren't party to the clerk of the course declaring everything safe. And handing back that to the race director to say, OK, we're all good now. I'm satisfied. Everything's safe to, to resume. Now you can do your unlapping procedure. OK, so don't tell us, oh, if you'd have done that 30 seconds ago, it would have been better. That's your opinion. But you're not the race director. The race director is making the decision. He is the one responsible for making that decision. On the grounds of safety, he is the person that is responsible. He is the person that is culpable if it goes wrong. He is the person that makes the decision. Don't tell him that it should have happened 30 seconds earlier because you don't know whether that was possible or not and whether all the checks had been done or not. I'm going to see if I can play this through a bit. It should, you know, bring him back into play possible, a possible point or two later on. So, lap 27. Here's the man who won here before after serving a drive through penalty. Yeah. And he's still not got past this. So, you can see, is he here? Is he on the outside here coming down the pit straight? So, which means if that, that's but his he car. He's a lap and 67 seconds yeah. behind. That might, that might be going some, even for Mark. 
He was a lap and 67 seconds behind, did he say? Record on this uh, track, talking of records. John Eric Verne, another retirement for him as he alluded there, second time in a week. Oh, we see him, Webber. Last six races, he's either scored points or is retired from the race. It's a famine or feast, quite literally for him. Worked well for Jensen Button, he had just pitted. Right, so this is Webber, okay? This is Webber. Um, and so we're on lap 27. So didn't get, uh, there comes Mark Webber through the back. He had just pitted, so didn't get delayed by having to safety car pace back to the pit. And then order the leaders too much, but it's worked well for JB. It's fresh set. Okay, so he's now past the safety car. We're on lap 27, so what do we know? What do we know about the rules as they're written now about the sport? He's released on lap 27 which means lap 28 is the mandatory safety car lap, which means they can go racing again on lap 29. Let us see what happens. <sighs> Look, this is just showing you what Brundle and Crofty have lived, what they know. Okay, this is the replay. This is Mark Webber. But this is, and they're commentating on this now. Much of a threat to, to Jensen Button. And then Lewis Hamilton. Behind... I'm going to have to pause it from time to time because of the copyright situation of playing footage with, without an analysis. So I've got to an analyse this as we go. Ryan Hulkenberg, if Hamilton's having struggles once again on his time. No, it's replay. No, they're all behind the safety car doing a bit of weaving. This is the start, finish straight, and he's hammering it down here. Is that that's going to help Jensen Button maybe consolidate that that fifth place? And so they'll start talking about Mark Webber now. Absolutely. Well, Mark's charging down the inside. I, I believe he's allowed to do that. He's been. But Mark's charging down the inside. I believe he's allowed to do that. Brundle believes he's allowed to do that. Oh, to pass the safety car. So at some point, he, and you want to pass the other cars as quickly as you can. He's been given the order to pass the safety put car. It's fine. That's what he's doing. And Crofty, that's what he's doing. Take it the other cars are made aware of this and are told by the team, look, careful. <laughs> so you presume the other cars are told of this. Okay, this is this rule that they've been been carrying out for four times in 2012. It's happened in Monaco 2013. This is Germany 2013. So it's happened enough times for people to get used to it and know what it's all about. Mark's coming through. Yeah. So, like I say, that's the way it is. So we've moved on to lap 28. We know that this is now the mandatory safety car lap. So at the end of this lap, we should see the safety car in and they can start racing. So lap 29 can be a racing lap. I've just backtracked a bit because I just want you to hear the audio uh, of Brundle to demonstrate to you what Brundle actually knows about the implications of the unlapping process. It's really key. Listen to Brundle. Pay attention to what Brundle says. Uh, he should have had that half a minute ago because he could be down that pack and it should, you know, bring him back into play. It should bring him back into play, right? So it's not, it's not to get out of the race between the leaders. It should bring him back into play. Let's listen to Brundle. Possible, a possible point or two later on. Well, he is the man who won here before. After... And a possible point or two later on. So is this discarding somebody just to get them out of the way? Brundle is saying he still might get a possible point or two later on. He's still in the race. It's a completely different story to how he's told it every other time and how he told it in Abu Dhabi. Because there, he was just getting them out of the way so they don't interfere with the race between the leaders. Here, Brundle's actually stated, he's just stated there and then, this guy may still get some points. Right, let's just play that again. He could be down that pack and he should be. You know, bring him back into play, possible, a possible point or two later on. Well, he is the man who won here before after serving a drive-through penalty. So, 
they know the implications they're lying they are lying to you strap on fans can you not see you are being lied to you are being lied to by the sport one of us is telling the truth me the sport is telling you all sorts of things and you're going to pick out what you want to believe because it gives you your desired outcome doesn't mean it's the truth one of us is consistent with what they're saying one of us is explaining it and is explaining it with valid reasoning that makes sense and it's always the same and it's actually always you, you see it happen this way you see that what I say actually happens but what you hear them say you believe even though what they're saying doesn't happen like that often but you still believe it but here they are saying it as to what is really important does that twist your melon does it play with your head because it should because you should be questioning your own belief system now you should be questioning yourself and thinking to yourself, ah, shit, I think I've got this wrong. I think I've been lied to. And the guy that's talking right now is the one that's telling it how it is. And all this shit I've been giving him all the way through, maybe, maybe I was wrong. Don't worry, guys. I'll accept your apologies in the comments section. You know, I said there's always a reason. There's always a reason. Always look for a reason. Well, Crofty. Crofty. Crofty's going to deliver us a reason. Crofty is going to display to us his knowledge. Now, bearing in mind, we know this. We know that Weber got past the safety car on lap 27. We know that lap 28 is now what would be deemed the mandatory safety car lap. You even go back to them rules. They didn't even word it that, that way in 2013, and I will show you. Okay, Throughout this time, we have not had Brundle and Crofty, uh, and go back and watch this race, please do so. We've not had Brundle and Crofty hyping it up, going, and we think they're going to go racing at the end of this lap, and we think the safety car's going to come in, and we think this is going to happen. We've not had any of that. They've been chilled out. They've just been talking about what's happening. They're, they're just, there's been no promotion of the restart of the race yet and finally right this is the they've been talking about other stuff all the way through finally they get onto the subject and this is what crofty tells the world and the reason that we're still running behind this safety car is that mark weber now having unlapped himself is just working his way towards the back of the pack he's about <laughs> and the reason we're still behind the safety car is that Mark Webber, having unlapped himself, is still making his way towards the back of the pack. I thought it was so that it would be out of the way of the race between the leaders. But you know he has to be given the chance of making it to the back of the pack so that he is given the same sporting fairness. Did you hear that, strap-on fans? Let me just rewind that, what Crofty is going to tell you the reason, and see if you believe Crofty. In that respect. And the reason that we're still running behind this safety car is that Mark Webber, now having unlapped himself, is just working his way towards the back of the pack. He's about three corners away from Max Chilton. So, again, is this messing with your head? Is it messing with your belief system? Some of us have known this for years. I don't, probably didn't even watch this Grand Prix live. I could work it out because if you know sport, you can work out what them rules need to be and why they need to be like that. If you are a fair person, you kind of get it. You realise you can't you can't leave somebody a lap down and and it impede their chances in that race. But let's face it, in this race. He was still a lap down, wasn't impeding anybody, and so, but they were still allowed to do it. This couldn't be any clearer. 
Let's see if it, it, they, uh, this Brundle has anything to say about it. I don't know whether he does or not. We'll have a look. He's currently running at 18th, so I assume as soon as Mark Webber gets up to the back of Max Chilton, we can go racing again. So as soon as he gets up to the back of Ma Max Chilton, we can go racing again. That's what you're assuming now, Crofty. It's not a case of him being far enough out of the way of the leaders. It's for him to get back up to the, the back of the guy who's the next runner in front of him, the next competitor in front of him. There he is. Yeah, so Lewis lost two... There he is, look. ...places there, effectively. Putnam and Hulkenberg jumped him in the stop because he'd stopped just before the safety car. And he'd lost out, of course, being... So, lap 29, is this the race that all oh, the leaders are on lap 29? We're still with Mark Webber catching the back of that pace. Now they've, they've gone on to lap 29. Is this the race? That, have they gone racing? Have they gone racing on lap 29 after, after releasing him on lap 27, doing the mandatory safety car lap on lap 28, which means they can go racing on lap 29? Have they gone racing? Held up behind his teammate. Well, it still says safety car. Nico Rosberg for four or five laps. So we've got track of you. Vettel, the leader. Weber back here at this corner. Jumped by Roman Grosjean in the uh, first round of pit. So again, basic track of you all the way back in 2013. So if we've got it on the TV, what do you think the FIA have got? What technology do you think the FIA have got to be able to see where the cars are on track? and make their decisions in accordance with that. Oh, I thought it was a manual process. It's always been done manually for years. Yet, oh, and you expect us to believe that, do you? You expect us to believe that. Pit stops. And then not being able to defend against either Raikkonen or Event. So you just saw there, he's just about to catch the back of the pack. Eventually. Alonso, Hamilton having to dive into the pits to get they're on lap. Set. They're on lap 29, as you can see. The tyres. So, so Weber's last, but he's now on the lead lap, and the only. So Weber's last, but he's now on the lead lap. Just between him and the leader is the pack. Okay, Sebastian, you're doing a good job on fuel. So now that he's caught up, here's the message. And oh, even if he's not quite caught up, you can see as they go around this lap, he's he definitely will be. Keep doing that. Safety car in this lap. So what has the race director done? What has the race director done? He's been monitoring the location of Mark Webber's car as he makes it around. And once he's, re you know, re-caught the back of the pack. Okay, gotcha. He's got there. We can go racing again. Simple as that. If you try and come up with a different explanation... You are wrong. That is the simple explanation of what it is. Some things are what they are. That is what it is. There is no, oh, well, I think it's something else. Keep your opinion to yourself because your opinion is wrong. And we don't want your opinion impacting the innocent minds of others who don't know. We don't want your opinion misinforming others already you have been damaged by misinformation you've got damaged minds because you've been misinformed and we don't want that spreading so keep your opinions to yourself because if you come up with shit opinions in the comment section i'm going to delete them i'm not going to listen or even allow any of your lies and bullshit to be published on this channel in relation to this video i'm not having it because this is what it is. But we do the lap easy on the brakes. Right, I'm going to fast forward it to the end of this lap. Um, two seconds. So this is what the uh, the picture looks like as they've now um, gone on to lap 30. And they're back racing again. And so they, here they are. This is the, as they come across the line, this happens. Vettel. Um, Having completed 29 laps, so it's now on lap 30. Grosjean, this is the time difference. Raikkonen, half a second back from Grosjean. Alonso, a further half a second back. Button, less than a second back. Hulkenberg, less than a second, you know, half a second back. Hamilton, about half a second. 
This is what happens. Nose to tail with about half a second between each competitor. This is what happens on a Formula 1 restart. Watch them all come through as they cross the line. Well, Rosberg. Reichen looks a little bit too far behind. Grosjean for his liking. Who's making... And there you go. That's all the remaining runners. And that's the gap. So he's... Weber's now nine seconds behind the leader. But look at the gaps between each competitor. They're all nose to tail. All able to have a sporting chance of challenging the competitor in front of them. But all being susceptible to have that challenge from behind as well. That is the fair restart conditions. Sporting fairness as dictated by the FIA International Sporting Code. It cannot get any simpler or any clearer, clearer than I have just tried to demonstrate to you. And we'll then look at what we're at half distance, lap 30 of 60. Let's see what happens. Watch out for Weber on Perez as well for seventh place. The race is not over yet. They might... Watch out for Weber. The race is not over yet. Must be side by side into the chicane. I think Weber has just moved ahead. On the last lap. And uh, that's obviously the winner. But uh, Weber then passes Perez on the last. Weber then passes Perez. Last lap. So uh, comes up into seventh place. Hamilton finishes. So Weber. The car that had to get released so that from, from the very back of the running order and a lap down was released from that so he didn't interfere with the race between the leaders. That, that line, you remember that one? You remember that one that you believed? That's not true. He finished seventh. Was that because he was afforded the sporting chance, the sporting fairness that applies to all competitors that remained in that race. One that probably he didn't actually deserve. Because actually, he was already behind the car that was the car in front of him. And he was given that lap back on him. So he didn't actually deserve that one. You know, if before that incident, Weber had, you know, been just 30 seconds behind him and then ended up a lap behind him, then that's not fair. But Weber was behind him and he's closed up, but he's still a lap behind him. But he's still released from that. And that's because that's what the rules are there for, to recreate, effectively, the start conditions of the race. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. Now... Is ahead of Button for fifth and for sixth as well. Mark Webber does finish in seventh place as Fernando Alonso parks his car down at turn one. You would assume because he's run out of fuel to get back to the pits. Sergio. So again, we get changes in regulations. Do you not have to finish the races these days with a litre of fuel that the FIA can taste, test? And if you don't have that much fuel in your car at the end of the race, you get disqualified. There's a constant evolution of the rules of the sport. Okay? There's a constant evolution of procedures, safety procedures, all these sorts of things. So you need to actually be able to understand what's going on, but don't rely on Brundle and Crofty because they make a lot of stuff up or they lie and they hype stuff up on purpose. And they've got Far, far worse since the introduction of Liberty Media ownership to this sport. It's a proper hype job now. You used to get some more accurate information. You used to get an education more, more of an education about what was really going on. Now it's just a hype job. Now they are convincing the kids of lies in order to be able to dupe them. All they're trying to do is get the kids excited Get the kids hyped up by feeding them a load of lies. But in doing so, it enables situations to become manipulated because the fan base lacks knowledge. And when you don't give people knowledge, you can dupe them. And that is what took place in Abu Dhabi. Oh, where, where's the orange army? 
Can't see it anywhere. All these long-standing fans of Formula One. Where are they? Where, where's the orange? Is that him? Is that, is that the orange army there? On his own? Don't see it. Are there any uh, flares and shit going off? Can't see it. We can actually see the track because it's not being kind of flooded in orange smoke, which means visibility just disappears. You know, when cars are driving around at 200 mile an hour and they're to drive through smoke, through orange smoke, really safe, that is. See, also, Brundle and Crofty, they know their statistics as well. I mean, Brundle's going to tell us one now. <laughs> Sixth driver in history to reach 30 career wins. Sebastian Vettel, the sixth driver in history to reach 30 career wins. That's quite a landmark. Um, not as much of, as a landmark as uh, eight world championships. Not as quite as much of a landmark as that. Um, you know, those eight world championships that you didn't mention once that Lewis Hamilton was on course for in those final ten laps of Abu Dhabi. The only time you mentioned the world championship was that had Lewis Hamilton have pitted and lost position, and lost track position, he would have lost the World Championship. That's the only thing he said about it. Lewis would have lost the World Championship had he have done that. But he didn't do that. He didn't tell us that Lewis Hamilton was on course to make history, with things being as they were. That's not just strange. That is not just strange. Because it's not authentic, is it? In Formula One, Mark Webber then, he was a, remember, he was a lap and 67 seconds behind. Uh, helped out enormously by the safety car, having lost that wheel in the pit. A lap 67 behind, seconds behind, helped out enormously by the safety car. So you live that. You saw what happened. You saw the procedure that was carried out. You know that he's got to be released and be given the opportunity to make it back to the end of the, the runners. And yet, you now present differently. What have I got to say? It's just shown, shown you up for exactly what you are. It's shown you up for exactly what you are. Now, when you even look at here... The 2013 F1 Sporting Regulations. Um, this one's published on the 25th of September 2012. Okay. 40.12. If the clerk of the course considers it safe to do so. Considers it safe to do so. Okay. It keeps saying it. Okay. I'm not making this up. It's about safety. If the clerk of the course considers it safe to do so. And the message lapped cars may now overtake is shown on the timing monitors any cars that have been lapped by the leader will be required to pass the cars on the lead lap and the safety car and this is a bit this will happen only to cars who were lapped at the time they crossed the line at the end of the lap during which they crossed the first safety car line for the second time after the safety car was deployed Having overtaken the cars on the lead lap and the safety car, these cars should then proceed around the track at an appropriate speed without overtaking and take up position at the back of the line of cars behind the safety car. Whilst they are overtaking and in order to ensure this may be carried out safely, the cars on the lead lap must always stay on the racing line unless deviating from it is unavoidable. So let's read that there. Having overtaken the cars on the lead lap and the safety car, these lapped cars, right, these cars should then proceed around the track at an appropriate speed without overtaking and take up position at the back of the line of cars behind the safety car. There you go. The rule written there is so that they make it round to the back of the pack. Now, that rule has been modified, and in 2021, it didn't say that bit. But what it said is that the safety car will come in at the end of the following lap. OK, so what the rules have been amended to is to say, because there probably would be discussions about the fact that, hang on a minute, we're releasing these lap cars and still lapping for another two or three laps afterwards. 
and that's boring for fans, do we not go racing sooner? So they'll have brought in the rule at some point, and we'll find it. At some point, they will have brought in the rule to say, OK, we'll give them a minimum of one lap to give them the chance. And hopefully that will be enough anyway. Hopefully, if they get released halfway round a lap, they've already got half a lap, then they get one complete lap, and in one and a half laps, that's a you know should be on, on a lot of tracks enough time for them to get there anyway. So that's the way we'll write the rules. But we will still give the race director the discretionary use of the safety car. So if he doesn't feel that, that um, fair conditions have been achieved, he can keep the safety car lapping, which is what Massey has done on four occasions prior to Abu Dhabi, which I've evidenced in my videos. OK, which I showed you. Spain 2019, Brazil 2019, Eiffel 2020, Sakir 2020. Four races where Massey exercised his overriding authority for the use of the safety car, 15.3, by keeping that safety car out beyond the one mandatory lap in order to give those released cars the opportunity to make it around, rejoin the back of the safety car snake, so that that race can be restarted with fair conditions to every single competitor. That's what the rules have been. They've modified the wording of them rules, but the underlying meaning and purpose of those rules is how I describe it. The purpose of those. There's a reason why rules exist. There is a reason that they put these rules in place. For a purpose. That is what it is. It isn't to ensure that they get out of the way of the race between the leaders. And every example that can be given will evidence that. Thank you for your time. Please share this video as far and wide as you can. Because there is still conjecture. There is still debate there are still people that don't believe the truth and it's information like this which categorically cannot be refuted by anybody anybody that tries to argue about what is presented in this video we should just laugh at because they are wrong there is no counter arguments it is categoric proof categoric proof so please share this to awaken people, to educate people and make them see that they are being lied to by the sport of Formula One. They are being lied to. Thank you for your time. See you next time.